Tigres manager Diego Coca is the favorite to take over as Mexico boss. Uh, ESPN, our colleagues in ESPN Mexico reporting yeah. so just about done. Yeah. It's not an easy job. It's not, especially no, on the back like of... It's not a fun job either. It's not fun. I mean, the pressure is huge. And when you come on the back of Tata Martino, let's say poor tenure, let's put it that way, it's a big job. But Diego Coca knows Mexican football really well. He's done extremely well with Atlas, of course. Uh, and and you can see also why it's a very appealing job because if you do well, on the other hand, if you sort out the problems, if you make that team play well, then you become a hero and you become a legend. And then I think it's very rewarding, especially with the World Cup at home, of kind of like a third at home uh, in 2026. So, you know, good luck to him. Yeah, and not a great generation, perhaps, of, of Mexican players compared no. to the past. Yeah. But, you know, there is, of course, that, that track record of Argentines, you know, Tata yeah. Martino, yeah. La Volpe before La Volpe, that. Yeah, exactly, you know. exactly. Meanwhile, Gab, Carlos Queros is the new national team coach of Qatar. Are you surprised? I Nothing this man does surprises <laughs> me. Obviously, he's worked in the Gulf before. I don't, yeah. He's worked all over the place. Um, you know, the rebuild after the pretty horrendous World Cup they had. Um, he was at the World Cup with Iran. He clearly likes those sorts of challenges. Yeah. And good luck to him. He's, he's, he's to a good him. guy. Legendary Croatia coach Miroslav Blazovic has passed away, Jules. He is best known for taking Croatia to the 1996 Euro um, quarterfinal yeah. and the 98 World Cup semifinal. That was those great teams. Of course. Suker and Slavin Bilic yeah. and goodness knows who else. Yeah. yeah um, it really sad two days before his 88th birthday. Gab, he'd been, he'd been ill. He had cancer, uh, I think, for the last 10 years or so. Um, so... Of course, iconic for that competition. He was wearing, if you remember, if you're of that generation, like a, a police hat or an army hat because he was touched. He'd, he'd coached in France. He was speaking French really well. Uh, and if you remember in the 98 World Cup, there was a, a problem with at the uh, Serbia-Germany game where Commandant Nivelle, one of the uh, a, a, a French policemen, was attacked by some fans and, and uh, lost his life. Uh, and was in the coma for many, many months and, and weeks. And, and to pay him tribute, Blazevich wore the hat, and in the hat he had a, a, a photo of uh, Virgin Mary that he says that kept, kept them good luck all through that tournament that they finished third, of course. So, yeah, very special character, great coaches, co coach who won in a lot of the countries that he coached. So really sad day in Croatian football history, I think. Argentina, Uruguay, Chile and Paraguay have submitted their official joint bid for the 2030 World Cup. And according to reports, Gab, Saudi Arabia have offered to build and pay for the stadiums that they co-host Greece and Egypt will use and will have to be to build in their tri-continental bid as well if they go and, and also submit a bid for the three of them. So, so Saudi Arabia said to Greece and Egypt, hey guys, Come with us on the bid, but you know what? We pay for, we build the stadiums that, yeah. you know, you need to build for the bid. And we get to host three quarters of the games as well. Um, so there were, there were rumblings they would do this. I believe, I, I, I hope, I, I, I love to give credit to the people who come up with the story. I believe it was Politico who first reported this story. So it's not yeah. even like a, a, a football story. It may have been somebody else. I, 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 I That's where I saw it. Um, why don't you just buy Greece and Egypt, right? I mean, honestly, <laughs> think about it, right? You want to develop tourism? Like, you're going to... There's just so much museum-quality stuff in Greece yeah, and Egypt. I mean, I it's mean, literally, you know, the, you the, know. The, the two of the three greatest founding celebrations in... Yeah. in uh, uh, sorry, civilizations in, in Europe and North Africa. Why not? Um, this is odd to me. Again, I don't think they have a shot at getting it so close after 2022 in, in Qatar. Yeah. I think there are principles about spreading it around. It's also true. Greece certainly can't host the World Cup on their own. No, Egypt would probably Egypt. struggle to do it as well. Yeah. Not a bigger country. Um, so, you know, it's normally have joint bids. I, to me, I find this a little bit depressing, unnecessary, overstretching. It's not really the idea, yeah. I, I, look, I get it. You know, MBS says, oh, you, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? So let me go and take a <laughs> shot here and accelerate my, my vision for the country, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a really tough sell. And remember, too, like, you know, Greece won't have the backing of UEFA because I think UEFA are going to back the Spain-Portugal bid. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of neutrals say you got to go 2030, time for it to return to um, to Argentina. I'm oh, sorry, to, to Uruguay, Argentina. Yeah. You're watching I mean, to the South America, and especially yeah. Uruguay, because obviously 100 yeah. years 
uh, after. I mean, if they have an Argentina, the final has to be, we agree, Montevideo, right? There is no other yeah, place yeah, sure. the final can be. So, um, yeah, it's political. I think people are going to vote in this. I really hope this does not come down to who chucks the most money out. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.